This is pianist Boris Giltberg practicing a Bach three-part invention. And this is Boris's phone, which he uses to record his practice. Listening back to your own playing can be like, like listening to a recording of your own voice. Uh, is that what I sound like? But it's no problem for Boris, who's one of the most humble and hardworking, not to mention brilliant musicians I've ever met. So, my first thought is that I don't like it, but then the question is, what is it I don't like? In this video, Boris will demonstrate his simple method for self-improvement at the piano using Bach's three-part invention in G minor, as well as his iPhone. Not Bach's iPhone, Boris's iPhone. The video is a snapshot of Boris's broader approach to the instrument, which he elaborates on in detail in his tone-based course called Sound and Color. The lessons in this course are windows inside the creative process of one of the most prolific and really deep thinking musicians working today, as well as a crash course in piano technique and interpretation. You're about to watch one of five sound studies featured in the course, where Boris uses feedback from phone recordings of himself playing different passages from repertoire in order to make adjustments to his interpretations. If you enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you really enjoy the video, go sign up for a free two-week tone-based trial to watch the full course. And also check out the other lessons Boris teaches on two of Rachmaninoff's most popular preludes and on one of Ravel's most impossible pieces. I should also say that tone Base makes a great gift for a family member or friend or a piano student. And now I'll hand it over to Boris Gilbert. Let's look at a passage from a three-voice invention by Bach and see how we can apply the various elements we discussed. So first of all, in terms of the physical principles, as I said, they're all universal, but perhaps the ones that involve the full body's weight leaning into the keyboard apply less to Bach's music because if you think of the instruments of his time and also the music that reflects having been written for a clavichord or a harpsichord and not for a modern age piano. So this kind of full body power is required less. But we definitely still have the fingertips at our disposal and the activity and how much of that and the forearm uh, uh, for sure. And th the rest can just remain relaxed and support the sound production. So as, a, as an example, I would like to look at the opening of the G minor three voice invention and just looking at the score um, and even playing it as a first step without anything applied just completely neutral without trying it to sound like anything So what happens here in terms of imagination? What could we see in this texture? So first of all, of course, the fact that the texture is polyphonic and that all three voices at different points within this phrase have motives which are the opening motive of the, of the uh, three voice invention. So we need to imbue them with a certain character. And now we can begin thinking, so what is it? Is it purely... Um, keyboard music or is it Bach imitating a trio sonata, um, two violins um, and, and harpsichord for example, or is it violin, oboe and, um, and continuo, or is it vocal, is it a soprano, mezzo-soprano and a tenor, uh, like in a three voice a texture from a motet. Here I would say maybe this is closer to instrumental music than to vocal just by the fact of this phrase, this triad and then this incredibly difficult to execute jump of an octave for a voice. If you try singing that, you will immediately recognize that. So maybe perhaps less vocal, but some instruments. And then I recognized the need to separate the voices because when I played it just like that, flat, they were all compressed. They were all one thing. And this is the last thing which Bach had intended. So we need to find ways, whether with sound or with phrasing and articulation to separate the voices. So. Then I will just for now choose one of them. So for example, I am imagining that the, uh, 
um, upper line is a woodwind instrument, for example, an oboe, and the um, middle line is a string instrument. And of course, it will not sound like any of this, but we can try and find colors that would first separate the voices, so different colors for different instruments, and then try to find colors which match the idea which would like to execute. And to check uh, what I'm doing, I'm gonna use the most important tool in piano playing, and that is the phone. And it's very easy for us to take the phone and use either the voice memo app or uh, use it as a video recording application. You just put it by the piano and just play. And I have to say, this is perhaps the most useful thing you could do. At first, you probably will not like it, but the very fact of having immediate feedback and having to confront your own playing and experience the gap which we usually have between what we imagine we are doing and what we are actually doing is the first and absolutely crucial step in starting to breach these gap between the two and bring what we're doing closer to our imagination. So I will try to execute this vision of woodwind, string, and continuo, and let's see how it goes. Then we can listen and decide what needs changing. So let's watch it. I had some ideas from my own while playing, but let's get some more objective feedback. My first thought is that I don't like it, but then the question is, what is it I don't like? So first of all, of course, when you record yourself, you will be confronted by all the elements of your playing. So not just the sound, but tempo, which in this case, in, for my taste, was too slow and too segmented, bar by bar. But also, I personally didn't hear there any color at all. To me, they all sounded the same. So I will try now to do one better. And maybe not necessarily... So this is something which also had to be said. We don't need to force on ourselves an image. If the image doesn't survive contact with reality, because in the end, this is not an oboe and this is not a viola and this is, this is a piano. So maybe we need to find something else. Maybe it's a question of dynamic. Maybe it's a question of separating them by agogic, so subtle rubato or fluctuations of the rhythm, something else. And we try and we see what happens, and this kind of feedback loop is what eventually, hopefully, will get us to a result which we are happy with. So what I will try to do now, for example, is try to change the tempo to make it a little bit more flowing, less broken down bar by bar, and see if rather than trying to force a specific kind of sound, I can separate the, vo the voices more by dynamic and see if that works. It also has to be said that this is an iterative process, so it is not always magically that by listening once to it, you can solve all the problems. Sometimes, especially with difficult pieces or pieces that are in styles that you are less confident um, of, it takes a while to get from the first encounter with your own playing to something that you like. But these steps need to be done. It was 
a better tempo, a better flow. There's still work to be done about the separation of voices, especially at these crucial junctions here. So this should remain alive for longer, so that this is perceived not as one line, but... So that would then be the next step in trying it again and again until we reach a result which we're more or less happy with. Yeah, that's kind of what I wanted. <laughs>